Hello, 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 hello everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. Um, the Cheryl Hubbard Show. Glad you can be here. Glad you can join me. So glad to see you today. Today is Saturday, um, March the 21st. And uh, so glad you can join me. So glad you can be here. So first I want to give honor to God and say, God, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. And I want to send all my blessings and prayers out to all of you, YouTubers, me and my family, you and your family, uh, through this crisis and this epidemic, pandemic, epidemic, pandemic that we're going through. And I'm gonna have I have some uh, things that I'm gonna read that I, that's very important. It's important and it's you know has to do with the coronavirus. So I went to uh, CDC's web page and whole lot of good information on there but um first I do have my um uh, you know have my la la today you know I can't I, have, I can't talk without this a lot of times you know either this or some tea coffee or water so this can right here I really don't like you know that much but it's pretty good it's um this is a fruit with uh this is strawberry with banana cereal mm-hmm and if you can see, if you can see closely, it has cereal in it. Mm -hmm. And then I had me a tuna, good old tuna fish sandwich. A good old tuna, tuna fish sandwich on, a, you know, on toast. Mm -hmm. I wish I had some lettuce, but I don't. Uh-huh. Oh. Um, Um, but, um, thank you for being here today. Glad you can join me. And, um, I want to say thank you for joining me today. And one thing. Glad you can join me today. And, um, you know, Saturday. So, um. Uh, Cheryl have a show playing in the background on YouTube. Sometimes I put other stuff on. It depends on what I, you know, in the mood for. In the mood for, I can put, uh, you know, videos on videos, music videos, or um, movies, you know, in the background. Um, but um, mm -hmm. also had me a couple of Sprite. Mm -hmm. So, this is, you know, thanks for joining me today. Glad you could be here today. Um, you know, Saturday, this is our time to, this is the, the day on Saturday, this is the time and the day that you like to sit back, unwind, and, um, you know, just, um, do the things that you need to do around the house. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't feel like you're renting. You know, you work all week, and you be like, you know, I just want to sit back and chill, watch a movie, maybe do a little spring cleaning, or um, do your nails, get your nails done, get your manic manicures, pedicures, mm-hmm. Um, that's what I want to do, too. Next, I want to get me, I want to buy the whole kit, you know. The whole kit that I can do my own nails at home. You know, I usually do my own nails, but a lot of times I don't like to put uh, polish on my nails. They look good, but they, you know, the polish just comes off so fast. It chips off so quick. And I find myself uh, every three or four days, I have to do my nails over because it, the polish comes off. So, I mean, I do my own nails, but I have a friend of mine. She goes to the salon, uh, the nail salon, get her nails done. Well, I said, that's cool, because she said, Cheryl, she said, Miss Cheryl, I work hard, and, you know, I'm going to get my nails, and I'm going to get my manicure and my pedicure. I said, go ahead, it's all right. Nothing wrong with doing things for yourself. But this is pretty good. I used to get the uh, pina colada one, you know, the la la, but this is good. It has protein, help you build up your immune system. It has five grams of protein. 
and it's made with real fruit. Some people can't drink this. I know uh, another another young lady in my building. She says she can't drink that those because she's lactose intolerant. But I said, you know, you don't want them. If you have them, you don't want them. You can always pass them down to me. Mm -hmm. But I usually buy them all the time anyway. I buy them all the time, and uh, but they don't last me long. But I, you know. Usually, they, they, well, they come in four in a pack, but you still can buy them single. So, but I buy them four in a pack, and I may get about four four packs or three four packs, sometimes two four packs, depending on what else I, other grocery items, gross, depending on what other grocery items I need to get. Nine times out of ten, I usually get two two four packs. <laughs> and they, they are very good. And then you can also make your own. Cause I used to make my own. Me and my husband we used to make them. Uh, we get out, uh, you know, whatever you want to put in. You put your 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 smoothies. I mean your, I mean you make it a smoothie, but you can put like uh, we used to put like almond milk. Um, I may put almond milk, uh, avocados, uh, fresh greens, uh, apple juice. Just chop up some apples, chop up some oranges, and um, you know whatever you want to put, you know. Excuse me. Whatever you want to put in your smoothies, I might get back to making my own, but I have to get me another. Uh, I want to get me another, uh, you know, blender. Cause I had I had three or four blenders, you know, uh, family bought for me, bought for me, and um, they bought them. And uh, but you know, I made uh, homemade smoothies so much, the blades, you know, they all bent, they got all bent up. And um, I ended up having to throw all of them out. I think I had three of them. And they were brand new. I ain't having that long. I probably had about a year. But I was making my smooth, my homemade smoothies so much. And then I was making my salads, you know. So, um, yeah, so, uh, uh -huh. oh, it's real good. Uh, 25th. And uh, what I do, you know. Toast the bread, take the tuna fish, drain it, put the uh, mayonnaise or even salad dressing, mix it up, put a little onions in it, and boil the egg, chop that up, put that in there, and toast the bread, and you know, and toast the bread, it gives you a, um, I think it gives it the sandwich a better taste when you, you know, toast it. Usually, I, and sometimes I put lettuce on my bread too. Lettuce on the bread, then put your tuna on there, and your toast. Your bread is already toasted, and then you know you, that's your meal right there. And you might can have sometimes you have a little salad, you know, to the side. A lot of people don't like tuna fish. Some people don't like it. Well, sometimes I like to put my tuna on crackers too. Okay, so let me get busy here. Okay. So we're talking about, you know, so the coronavirus is, you know, and it's all, that's all that's in the news now is the coronavirus. So, you know, wash our hands. We're trying to be, uh, <clears throat> we're trying to be more health conscious, more, I guess, you know, I guess it will say, I guess it will, we can say that we can boost, we need to boost our hygiene uh, methods, washing our hands uh, three, three, four times a day. Um, you know, keeping our body clean and all that, and also six stay stay apart about six feet between us, you know, between you and the next person. Ooh, excuse me, and um, so just following the you know the rules, following I guess the guidelines, uh, you know, from the health professionals, the CDC. Uh, so I invite you to go to the CDC's website because I went on there earlier today. Center for Disease Control, and they have a lot of good information on that website. Because actually, this is probably only my first. This is my first time going on the website. I've never been on there before because you know we had other outbreaks in the past. So I wanted to learn. All, I wanted to learn about more. I wanted to learn more about those other outbreaks. And um, and then I found out why it is so important for you know when you're coming up. You're coming up and getting your shots. The kids have to get their shots. You know, measles, mumps, rubella, diphtheria. So 
I was always running. I know back in the day when my kids were small, you know how you, um, you know how you, you know, your kids get shot and they cry and you get so upset and scared. You don't like to see your kids crying because you figure they, the shot is going to hurt them. But that little pinch now when I, I mean, over the years, when I think about it, that little pinch and that, that little pinch that they give them, it don't take long. And then, the, then them crying, that is far uh, less worth. I mean that's 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 more. I guess I would say that is more. It's worth. It's worth. It's worth more for them to get to go through that little pain and cry than then to then them to get uh, one of those diseases or infections because um, catching those diseases and those infections can be more deadly than just that little pinch and that little cry that you know you see your baby getting a little shot because I know I was one of those mothers that be like oh man. I don't want my baby to get the shot because they're going to be crying and they're going, you know, it makes me so sad to see them cry. But when you come to think about it, you know, doctors are only doing what's best. Uh, th th those shots and those vaccinations save lives. Mm -hmm. So that's why they are trying now to create this vaccine for this um, coronavirus. So uh it's very vital to have that now and then once it hits its peak and there are no more cases we don't know whether or not it's going to come back again it may come back again and um we don't know if it could be a stronger strain or the same but these vaccinations are very um important and getting these yeah getting these vaccinations are very important uh getting the vaccination so I went to um, CDC's website, and I, I was curious to want to know where did the coronavirus uh, come from? So I said, where did coronavirus come from? The coronavirus came from a bat, a snake, or a pangolin. Uh, so I went to uh, the uh, CDC's, it's, it's a health page. The health page of their, or it's, it's, it's linked to their website, but I don't think it's the actual website, but it was the same thing reported on this page. This is from the CDC, but the same thing reported on this page uh, was the same thing that's on the, uh, the website. And it says, um, new study found that the coronavirus may have originated in bats. Bats and then spread to humans via a snake or a pangolin. So in other words, they, they feel that it uh, was transmitted from a bat and I guess uh, somehow got into a snake and a pangolin and then it was transferred to humans. So in other words, if they, people not washing their hands and hygiene are poor, that's how those type of things spread. Um... And it says right here, we have seven coronaviruses. There are seven coronaviruses known to infect humans. They originated in Wuhan, China. And that is right now, there's baffling uh, experts searching for the source. Uh, the virus that has never been, in, this virus has never been encountered before. That's what the website is saying. Coronaviruses are known for their crown-like shape, causes respiratory illness like the common cold. Causing respiratory illnesses like the common cold. In the beginning, many of those infected worked or shopped at a wholesale at a wholesale seafood market in Wuhan, China, which also sold live and freshly slaughtered animals. See, that's that's the thing, you know. Uh, Wuhan. That's why Trump was saying they, you know, that um, it came from China because according to the CDC's web uh, page. This is their information page. So according to the CDC's information page, it started at the seafood market in Wuhan, China, where they slaughter, they killing live, they, they sold live and freshly slaughtered animals. Just think about animals. We don't know what kind of diseases these animals have. That's why they tell you a lot of time, uh, you know, that's why they tell us a lot of time, don't eat a lot of that red meat coming from these animals because... We don't know if 
what type of stuff these animals may have, and that stuff is passed right to humans. And humans, our bodies can't take those type of things, you know. So that's why I cut back on a lot of, you know, I don't eat no red meat at all. No red meat at all, you know, steak, hamburger, mm-mm, none of that. Uh, so let me read on. And it says, uh, researchers at South China Agricultural University have analyzed over 1,000 metagenome samples of wild animals to find pangolins, a type of ant-eating, a type of ant-eating, a type of ant-eaters. They are the most likely, inter, uh, the most likely intermediate host of the novel coronavirus. So in other words, it comes it starts from the bat and then it goes through the host, which is the um it started from the bat and it goes through the uh what was that? The host the host was the uh oh the snake. Uh so in other words, it starts from the bat, then it goes through the host, which is a snake, a snake or a pen golden. Snake or a pangolin. And it says, um, <clears throat> since bats in, in since bats hibernate in the winter, making it unlikely that call that, that is what caused the current outbreak. So in other words, they figure uh bats hibernate in the winter, so they don't according to the CDC's information page, uh they don't think that the bat excuse me, the bat would have transmitted this, this uh, coronavirus because they hibernate in the winter, but so it is just, I guess, speculation. So they figured on if it didn't come from the bat, it must have came from the snake, the snake or the pangolin. And then we said a uh, best original, best original source, a previous study theorized that it went through snakes before being passed on to humans. If it went through the snakes before it was passed on to the humans. That's something else, man. This is something else. Animals sold at the seafood market in Wuhan might represent an intermediate host facilitating the emergence of the virus in humans. That's terrible, man. That's something that, in other words, since that is like that, then that, that may be something that we have to deal with for life. You know, because when once it comes, we don't know if it's going to come back again. That's why they tell everybody to stay in the house. This, this is some serious business right here. This is serious business. Okay, let me read over. Okay, it says, um, Best original, best was the original source. A previous study theorized that it went through snakes before being passed on to humans. Animals, animals sold at the seafood market in Wuhan might represent an intermediate host facilitating the emergence of the virus in humans. Okay, let me get it together. Uh, In other words, animals sold animals sold at the seafood market in Wuhan might represent an intermediate host facilitating the emergence of the virus in humans. Bats have an unfortunate history of passing potentially dead, dead, deadly pathogens to humans. And then it says virologists, horseshoe bats, harboring virus strains with all the genetic building blocks of the SARS virus that jumped to humans in 2002. So 2002, see, I see in 2002, where it was the SARS, and um, I had I had the I had the word that, that I had the you know the the spelling of that the SARS, but I think it's on another page. So Afri African bats are almost all, African bats are also reservoirs of the incredibly dangerous Ebola virus. When a species jump uh, appears, whenever a virus jumps from one species to another, that species would not initially have a well-developed immunity to, to the virus. 
So in other words, when it jumps from one species to the next, uh, that uh, other species might not automatically have an immunity. So it jumped from the snake, it's jumping from the bat to the snake to the, uh, what's that, Angola, a pangolin. It jumped from the bat to the snake to the pangolin and then to the human. So in other words, we, we won't have, automatically have an a, a, a immunity to the virus. So if we were immune to the virus, that would be good. But that's why they say, that's why they talk about the immune system. So if you have a, a weak immune system, you don't have no, you're not immune to the virus. So that's why they say the older population, we're not immune. We're not immune to that virus. So I know I'm in that class. I'm not I'm not trying to get that hope and pray that I don't get it. So I'm in the house. I'm trying to listen to what they're talking about because I'm not a doctor. And all the only thing I can do is do my research. And so I can get a better clarity and understanding of what is going on. So um, in other words, when it jumps from one species to the next, you are not automatically immune. So we don't know. We don't know if any other virus, any other, um, right, any other viruses are going to come along. We don't know. Hopefully, you know, I mean, that's the first time in my lifetime that I ever, you know, that it ever, that it ever hit the United States like this. And, um, let me see. So it says, um. It says, when a species jump appears, a species jump appears, whenever a virus jumps from one species to another, um, that species will not initially have a well-developed immunity to the virus. As time passes, our ability to fight the new virus increases, uh, according to Dr. Uh, Waleed Javed. That's what he told Healthline. So uh, as time passes, our ability to fight the uh, the new virus increases. So in other words, as time passes, our ability to fight. So in other words, once uh, hopefully once we, you know, once the virus reaches its peak, and we don't see a spike in cases, and then you know it's gone. Then if it comes back, then you know, but you know. We don't know if it comes back. Some people probably, I guess, will develop and uh, uh, will develop, you know, will be immune to it. Okay, we have seven coronaviruses known to affect humans. Excuse me, we have Ebola, severe acute respiratory syndrome, that's SARS. Okay, I, that's what I wanted to know what that meant. Uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, that's SARS. The Middle East acute respiratory syndrome. Middle East Acute Respiratory Syndrome, that's MERS, M-E-R-S. Four of them actually cause common cold. They have been with us for a very long time. Uh, so we have the, uh, so SARS, yeah, we have SARS. That, that stands for, um, I just read it. I just read SARS. Severe Acute, okay, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. So severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Um, for a very long time, uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS and MERS, Middle East acute respiratory syndrome, they are considered a, a jump from another species to humans, and this new virus is another possible jump. So a jump from the bat to the snake to the uh, uh, pangolin and jump right inside the human. So they over there slaughtering... Uh, uh, they over there in China slaughtering these uh, animals, you know, live animals, and then that, you know, somebody probably got sick right from there, you know, that they probably didn't, so they probably, they must didn't have on their, you know, their, you know, their masks and their suits and their gloves and all that, you know, maybe they didn't have that, because maybe if that, if they were, you know, well prepared, they over there slaughtering live animals and stuff, you know, I said, wow, so they over there slaughtering wild animals over there in, in, in uh, Wuhan, China, you know, so they seem to think, that's why Trump said, you know what, it came from China, it's right here in the research, it's right here in the research, it came from China, it says, um, four of them actually caused common cold, they have been with us for a very long time, 
Uh, SARS, MERS are considered a jump from another species to human. It says in New England, in the New England Journal of Medicine, increased preparedness is needed at animal markets and other animal facilities. You know, so hey, I'm, this is information. You know, that, that I ain't gonna be around no animals, slaughtering no animals, cutting them open, and you know, no what's in them animals. That's why they tell us don't eat all that all that meat. All that red meat and these animals, these disease-ridden animals, and that being taken care of right, I mean, they are they uh, they should be examined before you cut them open anyway. That's what that's what that's what should happen. Why aren't are these animals examined with a physical before you cut them open and get? Because when you cut some, it's just like cutting us open or cutting a human open. You know, anything can get in your pathogens, pathogens or. What you call germs, uh, bacteria, and anything again. That's why they, you know, they don't like you to have no kind of openings in your skin. I know one time it was on the news that this lady, I think it was a lady, it was a lady or a man, I believe it was a lady. I don't know, it was a lady or a man, but they went somewhere, they went to a beach, and and some kind of uh, something got inside her, uh, the leg or something. You know, so if you got an opening, you got a cut or something, and you're getting in the water, you got to be careful when you're getting into these waters, too. Something got in the water, something got in her leg. I guess she had an opening, and that, that can, a disease can enter your body that way, too. So I don't fool with nobody's beaches and waters and none of that, you know. Not even in my younger days. I never, you know, never went swimming or none of that. Uh, okay, and then I have... Uh, it says uh, in New England Journal of Medicine, you know, well, be prepared. All these, these markets, animal markets and other animal facilities. So, and this is something they say, stay home if you're sick, clean, keep your hands clean, avoid close contact with people that are sick, avoid touching eyes, mouth, where you can transmit pathogens in your body. Uh, stay six feet away. A lot of people not adhering to what the CDC is saying. These people are professionals, doctors. They know what they're talking about. They have created shots and everything just think about this all the um um the outbreaks we had in the past we had the measles the mumps rubella all of that you know a lot of those things have been eradicated because of these uh smart scientists and doctors so when they say get your kids take your kids get their shots that's what they mean you know so we have you know because polio polio was polio was terrible Polio uh, crippled people. They didn't have their polio shots. They got they got the polio, and it's still prevalent in some parts of the country now. But over here in the United States, you don't hear about polio no more. They created the doctors and scientists. They created those shots. My kids had all their shots, and I had my shots when I was in elementary school, coming up through school, and I had all my mother and them made sure we had all our shots. Uh, so next I have um. Although the viruses can have severe effects on people, experts say that this diminishes over time as our immune system adapt. Uh, then, you know, remember we had smallpox. Smallpox came about in 1633 to 1634. Uh, you could get high fever, chills, uh, severe back pain, and uh, rashes after a large vaccination initiative. After a large vaccination initiative in 1972. Smallpox is gone from the U.S. In fact, vaccines are no longer necessary. Well, I say in other words, see, that's what I'm saying. These uh, things are important. I wanted to get on that web page and see what was going on. I am very interested. I'm very interested in med medical profession because I, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in the health of my body, the health of people, the world, humans, you know. And then they had yellow fever. Yellow fever, uh, 1793. Oh, they got 17. Oh, came out 1793. Five, 5,000 people died. Uh, they back, they developed the vaccine, and then license. They developed, they developed the vaccine in 1953. They developed and licensed a uh, license a vaccine in 1953. There's no cure for yellow fever, but one vaccine is enough for life. See, see that, that that's smartness right there. That is that is so. We have to be thankful. We definitely have to be thankful. Definitely have to be. I am thankful. To, I'm thankful. Thankful to these doctors and scientists. Uh, the CDC. Uh, I'm so thankful for you for being able to make this published. This is published information. 
and anybody can read. Published information available to us, and they tell us, they instruct us to go to the website so we can, you know, you can learn about this stuff. We don't have to be doctors and lawyers to learn. You don't have to be, you don't have to be a doctor, you don't have to be a lawyer, you don't have to be this, this or that. You know, there's nothing wrong with doing your research. Everybody has research. A lot of things that we can learn are public knowledge, public information. A lot of things, public knowledge and public information. And Philadelphia was once the nation's capital. Philadelphia was once the nation's capital. Remember they used to say Philadelphia. They said something about yeah, Philadelphia was something. I forgot the slogan. But it say they had some refugees that left that left Philadelphia and they came. And when they came, when they went somewhere, they brought the yellow fever with them. They brought a yellow fever epidemic. That's how we have an epidemic now. Just like this was a different epidemic, though. They brought, they was from Philadelphia, and they was, they was fleeing from Philadelphia. They were refugees. And they fleed, and they brought the yellow fever with them. So, they brought the yellow fever with them. And say, that's why they said refugees left a yellow fever epidemic in the Caribbean island. Sailed, sailed. They sailed and carrying the, vi they sailed and carrying the virus with, within them. So, when they came, they sailed. Oh, yeah, the Caribbean Island. And when they came to the Caribbean Island, they brought the uh, yellow fever with them. And they, they developed the vaccine. And the, uh, the vaccine was developed in 1953. Uh, one vaccine is enough for life. And they said mosquitoes are key to how this disease spreads. That's why I remember we had, also they were talking about, um, you know, one time I think we had an outbreak of mosquitoes biting people because people be allergic and they can, you can get a disease from them too. So we got to be watching. We had to watch out because anything can bite us, even those snakes. You know, you get bit by a snake, you get bit by a snake. Uh, doctors, you know, hospitals, they already have those venoms. I guess they already had those venoms available. Everything is at the hospital. That's why they develop these vaccinations. They're developing this medicine, getting this, you know, different medicines, different vaccinations for different things. So, yeah, so... Uh, the vaccine was developed and then licensed in 1953. One vaccine is enough for life. Mosquitoes are key to how this disease spreads. Uh, Central and South America and Africa. So, so yellow fever is still spreading in Central uh, America, Central and South America and Africa. While yellow fever has no cure, someone who does recover from the illness becomes immune for the rest of their life. So in other words, if you get... If you get yellow fever and you are cured, then you become immune for the rest of your life. So that's what it said. It was saying in the other page too. So eventually our bodies will become immune uh, to the virus. So this coronavirus, eventually our bodies will be immune. So if it come back again, it might not affect nobody. So we hope and we pray that this is the case. So we just want to clear this up right now, you know. And so then we have another one, another outbreak, uh, cholera, cholera, 19, I mean, 1832 to 1866, two to six Americans died per day during the outbreak, 1896, 1896, we, it said, we, William Cole, a German scientist, developed a cholera uh, vaccine, cholera is still present in Africa, Haiti, Southeast Asia, Central Mexico, See, cholera, see, some of these uh, outbreaks and viruses are still prevalent, still out there. Cholera is still, uh, it's still, it's still present in uh, Africa, Haiti, Southeast Asia, Central Mexico. That's why when you're going on vacation and you're traveling, you know, CDC stresses too also. Check with the website to see if you're traveling, you go on a website, don't just travel to these countries and these different cities and you don't know the history on these cities and you don't know if there's an outbreak in that city at this particular time that you're traveling so it's good to check the cdc check the center for disease controls website so when you're traveling that's very important so that's what i learned on the website too because i never thought about nothing like that myself and then i have uh another thing i have uh it says for cholera, and you can, they have antibiotics, zinc supplementation, and re, uh, rehydration. 
So and then it says the uh, United States had three serious waves of cholera and infection of the intestine uh, between 1832 and 1866. See, we wasn't around for these outbreaks, but that's what I'm saying. We never, you know, we wasn't around for those other outbreaks because that was years ago. Oh, over 100, 200 years ago when this came out. That says cholera. The United States had three serious waves of cholera and infection, an infection of the intestine between 1832 and 1866. And it says the pandemic began in India and swiftly spread across the globe through trade routes. New York City was usually the first city to feel the impact. Cholera still causes 130,000 deaths a year. The virus is still present. Vaccine for cholera. Uh, it, uh, you know what they're telling you to get a vaccine for cholera if you travel to the highest risk areas. So in other words, that are ooh, nose itchy. So in other words, cholera is still. This virus is still out there. So. It says uh, the pandemic began in India. Say so, in other words, if you travel and you think you want to go to India, uh, India, or New York, uh, by the way, they, they don't say it's in New York, but they just say that uh, the pandemic began in India and swiftly spread across the globe through trade routes. New York City was usually the first city to feel the impact. And it says cholera still causes 130,000 deaths a year, and the virus is still present. Uh, in other words, they say if you if you travel into the high risk uh, countries and cities, then you may need to um, get get vaccinated. Yeah, sometimes you travel and you never think about that. You know, you get you think about your your passport, but do you need a vaccination for certain countries and cities that you're traveling to? Then we have scarlet fever. That was an epidemic in 1858 during every during during, during epidemic. 95% uh, of people who caught the virus were children. I heard about the scarlet fever. In is, uh, how it ended was a mystery, mostly due to improved hygiene. So, you know, washing your hands, keeping your body clean, and, you know, washing your hands, keeping your face clean, keeping your hand out, your, don't put your hand all up in your face if you do wash your hands before. Uh, treatment involves antibiotics. Scarlet fever is a bacterial infection that can occur after after strep throat. No vaccine to prevent strep throat. It's important for those with strep throat symptoms to seek treatment quickly as possible. See, I never thought nothing like that. So if you got strep throat, seek uh, treatment as soon as possible because it can turn into scarlet fever. See, that's something I never knew. So, but, you know, I guess, you know, a lot of times we figure that since we're not doctors, we don't need to keep up on this information. But, you know, it's, it's, it's your body. And just like um, just like with the law, just because you're not a lawyer, that don't mean you shouldn't keep up with uh, how the legal system is set up and how things are done. I'm not a lawyer, but I did do my legal assistant. Uh, I had my legal assistant diploma, but even if I didn't have that, and then I took a law, a business law class in Australia. I took a couple other law classes, and then I took classes with my legal assistant uh, diploma that I have. But even if you don't have that, uh, then it's still good to know about the law. You need to know about the arrest process, the uh, you know what when it's time for you know somebody to post bail or you know arraignment, the bail arraignment, arrest, you know different things that come down with the legal system. You know it's good to know. So let me move on. So we have, uh, I went and then I went further to investigate they, it, on the page, on the uh, uh, information page, uh, US based outbreaks. They had the enoki mushrooms, uh, enoki mushrooms, they have the clover sprouts, but you can go in there and click on these and it tell you, you know, it had the date on there. See, the enoki mushrooms were March 2020. So I didn't click on it. I, th I think I did click on it. I think I did click on it, but uh, clover sprouts, February 2020, uh, coronavirus, January 2020, so January, so we dealing with it. We've been dealing with that for two months, and I guess none of us really took it seriously. But seriously, when we get caught up on it, you, you know, we heard, of, we saw that it was over there in China, because from the news, uh, when they were showing the news, when they showed the news clips, they showed uh, a lot of people in China. 
you know, with the mask and stuff over their face, but I guess, you know, some of us didn't really think that it was going to affect us, but then it started, next thing you know, it's over in the United States, so everybody was like, oh, it's over in China, it ain't going to bother us. Next thing you know, you know, because it's easy to spread, because you have people getting on airplanes, people getting on airplanes, people that quarantine, quarantining them, quarantining them themselves, and then that's how it's easy to spread. Then we had the lung lung injury uh, from e-cigarettes and vaping. That was August 2019. We had raw milk, raw milk brucella, February 2019, measles outbreak. And they still have, I didn't know they had a measles outbreak. So they got a measles outbreak 2019, uh, January 2019. Then we have a pet, pet store puppies uh, bacteria infection, uh, December 2019. And see, um, in other words, uh, I clicked on that one. So, uh, if you bought, it, they seem to think that it had. It started when you buy. It starts when you buy a puppy. Sometimes you buy a puppy from a pet store. And um, in other words, they're saying clean your, wash your hands when you, before you deal with your puppies, wash your hands. Even even the pet store, pet store owners and pet store workers, make sure you keep your hands clean. Make sure you keep the area. That the puppy's going to be staying in. That has to be clean and sanitary. And you're cleaning up poop and all that. That's, I mean, sometimes feces can have germs and bacteria too. And infection. It can be infected too. You're cleaning up poop. You're exposed. You're exposed to that. You're cleaning up poop and all that. And then, you know, you make sure you have your gloves on. Make sure the area is clean. When you're washing the dogs, make sure uh, you put your gloves on. Clean your hands before and after. And... And then they said they were also saying that if you have a dog at home, or even if you have a dog in there, and you take care of it at the pet store or wherever, you know, if you can separate the pet food from the human food, if you don't have two separate refrigerators, you got set you got a refrigerator for your pet food and you got a refrigerator for the human food. So they said it's a good thing to separate. They said there's a lot of stuff I'm learning, so I am so glad that I went and read up on the page. So, so that's what they say in the pet store, uh, bacteria infection. Some people, uh, you know, got sick from that infection. So that's still going on. That's, that's December 19. And then they had a, uh, but this is 2017. They had a hepatitis outbreak. Home, it, it affected the homeless people and drug users. So they're telling them to make sure your needles are clean and make sure you keep your hands and stuff washed. Uh, it said March, but that was March 2017, and then we had the coronavirus 2019, Ebola, Congo 2018, and 2017. So it was two outbreaks of the Ebola. See, what I'm saying how, how them viruses can come back. It was 2017 Ebola in Congo, and it came back to uh, Co Co Congo in 2018. And uh, they said when you're dealing with those puppies, going back to that. Uh, you get you you bought a new puppy. Wash your hands after you're cleaning them and and their poop. And I think that is, I think that was it. So what I want to do is go back over this front this first part again. So in other words, the coronavirus. You know, go to um well you can go to CDC, uh CDC.gov. So they found that the virus had the virus may have originated in bats, B-A-T-S, bats, and then spread to humans via snake or pangolin. So, and then they say there's seven coronaviruses, seven coronaviruses is known, known to infect humans. And this is what they said. They said that it originated in Wuhan, China, Wuhan, China. A baffling, a baffling expert is searching for the source. Virus that has never been encountered before. They said this virus has never been encountered before. So just think, uh, but my opinion, I mean, I'm not in the medical profession, but um, to me, it should be, why would, I mean, it should be, I mean, I guess it's a curi curiosity type thing. Uh, I would be curious if I was, you know, I would, I would still be curious to, to say, to, to, to have the thought or to have the, uh, in other words, just, just to be thinking, I would be curious to say that, you know what, 
it doesn't have to be a virus that we never encountered before because it could be any virus that can creep up on us at any time. So that's what it says right here. It says, um, virus, the virus, the virus that has never been encountered before. So this coronavirus is affecting people never been, excuse me, never been encountered before. And it says, um, it said the coronavirus is, <clears throat> the coronavirus is known for their crown-like shape causes respiratory illness like the common cold. So it causes respiratory illness like the common cold. So, you know, so that is something else. It says in the beginning, many of those infected worked or shopped at wholesale, wholesale seafood market in Wuhan, China. That's where it started from. So they over there in Wuhan, China, um, they over there in Wuhan, China, uh, slaughtering, um, freshly slaughtered animals, you know, freshly slaughtered animals, and we don't know whether or not they had the proper uh, protective gear on, did they wash their hands, did they have the gloves on. So we don't know, you know, so it's kind of baffling to the, I guess, the medical professionals, scientists and all, and CDC and then basically everybody, the whole world. So it's uh, baffling to us, you know, so I've been reading up on, because I did hear something on the news where it's uh, uh, previous reports, I did hear something about uh, this market in Wuhan, China that they said, but I didn't know they were slaughtering live animals right there. I mean, it looked like, I mean, why would you slaughter animals in the market? It looks like it should be a, um, I mean, first of all, these animals should have, uh, you know, what testing do you do on the, these animals? Do are you, are you giving them physicals, blood work, and, you know, uh, you know, testing them before you slaughter them? And because if you're going to eat this, this meat and all this from this animal, you don't know what the animals might have. Just think, um... If the virus came from these animals that they slaughtered, did anybody eat anything from these animals? That's another thing to learn about. Did, well, did somebody eat, you know? Did somebody eat anything? Because it says uh, see, it was a seafood market in Wuhan, China. And they also, they also sold live and freshly slaughtered animals. Researchers at South China Agriculture University have analyzed over 1,000 uh, metagenome samples of wild animals to find pangolin, a type of anteater. So in other words, in the universities, <clears throat> sometimes the universities, you know, they do research too, so, because I hear it on TV all the time, and here, right here it says, researchers at South China Agricultural University, they analyzed over a thousand uh, metagenome met samples of wild animals to find pangolins, a type of anteater, and most likely to uh, most likely intermediate host of the novel coronavirus. So in other words, they're saying that um, researchers analyze the samples of these animals. So in other words, the researchers at uh, the Chinese uh, uh, South China Agricultural University, they analyze the um, they analyzed the, um, you know, they analyzed these uh, slaughtered animals, and they found that they had these uh, pathogens inside them. You know, once you, you're just like doing an autopsy, they did a basically an autopsy on these animals, and they find the pangolins in them. So when they found those, you know, I'm like China, China, you over there slaughtering these disease-ridden animals? It says samples of wild animals have found pangolins, a type of ant eaters. So they got ant eaters in these animals. Since bats hibernate in the winter, making it unlikely they call, that they cause their current outbreak. So, I mean, you know, they, I, guess, I guess they're still doing their research. So I'm just reading on. This is just information from the CDC's web uh, uh, information page. And some of this stuff is on the web page too, the CDC's website. So... They figure bats are the original source. So you know what? Because back in the day, we, I was always scared of bats because we would look up in the sky. We would look up in the air sometimes. You know, they were like, oh, they're going to bat. They're going to bat. So you know what? Uh, but we never thought anything about it. We just said they're going to bat. But we don't, you know, you, don't, you rarely see bats. We don't even see bats. 
you don't even see better. You don't even see them at night. You don't see them in the daytime. So, you know, I wonder. I mean, I guess they're somewhere in another country somewhere, but. I mean, we used to see bats over here in the United States because I know I saw some probably, I know it probably was about good 10 years ago, 10, 15, years, maybe 20 years ago. Uh, that's probably the last time I even saw a bat. You know, what it says, uh, samples of wild animals to find, they sample, they, they analyze a thousand uh, metagenome samples of wild animals. So that's a university. They did their research and they found that these wild animals that they sampled they did, uh, you know, I guess they call it an autopsy, but right here they call it, they just say they analyzed over a thousand met, metagenome samples of wild animals to find pangolins, a type of ant eater. So in other words, these wild animals that they over there slaughtering, they, got, they, they, they have ant eaters inside of them. So they said the university, uh, and then it was probably likely they saying that they trans, so in other words, you cutting these, you cutting these, uh, you slaughtering these uh, wild animals. There's disease written, virus written, written, and then you letting all stuff in the air while well, you cutting them and sampling them. But are you using sanitary? Uh, it was it a sanitary environment that you you know did this? But so it says um, since uh, since bats hibernate in the winter, making it unlikely that caused the current outbreak. Uh, they 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 think the bats is the source, but they figure it transferred through a different host, maybe through a a, a snake, uh, and then a pangolin, and then straight on inside the human. Uh, so this is something else I tell you. Bats original source. The bats are the original source. A previous study theorized that it went through it went through snakes before being passed on to uh, humans. So they figured it went through the snakes before it passed to the humans. And we got snakes on the ground and man, I tell you, this is too much. They say animals, animals sold as a seafood market in Wuhan might represent an intermediate host facilitating the emergence of the virus in humans. So in other words, they sold if I'm saying I was wondering did they eat those things, those animals? So it's an animal sold as a seafood market. Uh, in Wuhan might represent an intermediate host facilitating the emergence of the virus in humans. That's what that's what Trump's saying. That's why Trump know what he's talking about. He said, yes, I believe him. I believe that is to be true. Bats have an unfortunate history of passing potentially uh, deadly pathogens to uh, a human host. So that is something else. So, you know, so I think that's it for that. And, um, but um so bats have a uh bat that's something else bats passing uh these viruses and these pathogens right on into humans but they say they think the bats um uh, since the bats hibernate for the winter it's probably unlikely that it came from the bat but that probably was the original source so the bat probably passed it to the uh snakes and then the pathogens and right on into the humans and they and they slaughtering these uh, animals, these wild, uh, these live animals over here, uh, over there in uh, Wuhan, in Wuhan, China. They slaughtering those animals, and then that's where they, then they selling them. So you slaughtering animals with these pathogens and uh, viruses inside of them, you selling this 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 meat. Then the people eating that stuff, and that's where that stuff passed. That's probably why they had it so bad over there first. That's probably why they had it so bad over there first. <clears throat> and they tried to pass it over here. That's why Trump closed down and everything. And um, so, you know. But um, thanks for joining me today. And I invite you to go to the CDC's website. And I was just reading some stuff off the of CDC's Center for Disease Control website. You can learn all about the different uh, viruses that, you know, that we were encountered with over the years, see, so I can, I can review back, so we had a coronavirus that's going on now, so that's, uh, started at the seafood market in Wuhan, China, and where they, over there in Wuhan, China, at the seafood market, they were slaughtering, uh, freshly, live and freshly, they had, yeah, they were slaughtering freshly, fresh, fresh animals, what I say, they sold, well, actually they sold, they sold live and freshly slaughtered animals. 
And then they had the researchers, they did their job at the university and they did the little research. And they did the research and they sampled the wild animals and they found, they found, they sampled the wild animals and they found the pangolas, a type of ant eater, and most likely, uh, most likely the intermediate host of the novel coronavirus. But they figured that they uh, transmit, it was transmitted through the bat, from the bat, uh, through the snakes, and then the pangolins, and right to the humans. Right on in the humans, past the virus. And then we have, uh, we had the Ebola, severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS. We then they had the middle, the Middle East acute respiratory syndrome, uh, MERS, M-E-R-S. And uh, four of them actually called the common cold. They have been with us for a very long time. And then we have um, in the New England Journal of Medicine, increased preparedness is needed at animal markets uh, and other animal facilities. And then uh, we had uh, 1633, 1634, smallpox. Uh, then they had the ye uh, yellow fever, 1793. Uh, so yellow fever, uh, I think that affected the children, but that's still bad. It says, uh, it says yellow fever, vaccine, they developed the vaccine in um, 1953. And it says there's no cure for yellow fever, but one vaccine is enough for life. Uh, so we had smallpox, we had yellow fever, we had cholera, 1832 to 1866. And then we also had to watch out for those mosquitoes. And then we had uh, your cholera that still causes 130,000 deaths a year. Then we had scarlet fever, 1858, that was an epidemic in 1858. Uh, during the epidemic, 95% people of uh, people who caught the virus were children. Uh, end is a mystery, so they don't know how it ended. They figure good hygiene uh, might have ended it. Uh, scarlet fever is a bacterial infection. It can occur after strep throat. No vaccine to prevent strep throat. So in other words, if you get strep throat, they direct you to make sure you check with your doctor and get that cleared up so it won't turn into scarlet fever. And then, uh, so I think I had... Uh, I think I missed a couple, matter of fact. Let me see. I think I missed, uh, let's see. Let me see. I think I missed. Yeah, I think I missed. Yeah, I did. Matter of fact, you know what? Another one I missed, too. Okay, I did that. Uh, then I did another one. Let me see. Oh, we had a Spanish flu. Uh, Spanish flu, uh, first, 1942, uh, the flu virus must take, must take, uh, mutate, uh, oh, oh, the flu virus, viruses mutate, so keep up with new vaccines, that's effective. So in other words, if you get the flu, uh, and you'll become immune, you'll become, you'll, you'll, you'll become immune, so that's why I say, you may be immune to that vaccine, but you have to keep uh, getting different vaccines. That's why they give them to you every year. Because you might be immune for that year, but then the next year you need another flu shot because you become immune to that particular shot. So that's why I was wondering why you had to get a flu shot every year. That's probably why they do it every year. And then they had a diphtheria. Remember the diphtheria? We had uh, measles, mumps, rubella, diphtheria, all those. Those were epidemics too. 1921, 1925, we had diphtheria epidemic. Uh, we had 15,520 people died from diphtheria during, during this peak. It was a rare virus. Uh, then we had uh, the peak of polio, uh, 1916. And it said 1955, still exists in Asia and Africa. Certain parts of the world, polio is free, but still still in communities without vaccination. So in other words, some people still, some countries are still seeing an influx of polio because they're not getting vaccinated. So all of, all of our kids over here in the United States have been vaccinated. So I know all my kids were vaccinated. I was vaccinated when my mother had us. And because back in the day, they gave us our vaccinations right in the school. But so, <clears throat> then we have, um, then they had the Milwaukee, the contaminated water in Milwaukee, that was another, that was a disease. 
that was a disease too. See, the disease got in the water. So I didn't even, you know, when I heard about it on the news, but I didn't know the disease got in the water. I'm like, wow. Oh my God. It's something we gotta we gotta hope that, you know, we gotta watch our food, our water, our skin, our body. 1933, contaminated water in Milwaukee. Disease got in the water. And it, and it called it a crypt cryptosporidium. And it's free now. It's free now. Uh, well, crypt cryptosporidium. It's free now. The water, waterborne outbreak in the U. It's the worst waterborne, waterborne outbreak in U.S. history. It killed some people too. But I think they did. They got the new system. A lot of people, a lot of, a lot of celebrities, a lot of people came came forward and helped them with their, you know, water filters and different things. And uh, let's see what else I have. And all right, they said that improved water filtration helps it, it helps excuse me help eradicate <clears throat> help eradicate that disease. Seven hundred and forty eight thousand cases of cryptosporidium occur each year. So they did all that to the filters and they changing the filters and uh, doing things differently. But they still they are still having cases. Seven hundred forty thousand cases. Uh, per year, so the disease got in the water. That's something. The disease getting your body, getting your water. I said, well, we got, you know, thank God for these doctors. I said, God, thank you for these doctors. They are so smart and creating these vaccine vaccinations and uh, uh, just creating this medicine, different medicines, vaccines, and different things over the years. But thank God. Just think about our kids coming up. We're, we're coming up, we're growing up. I mean, we you know we up, we grow, we grew up, so we're still growing, you know. But let's think your kids coming up. What if these vaccine vaccinations was was not available? What if these vaccinations were not available? Then we would have been that would have been something else. But thank God for the uh smartness of these uh very brave and smart uh educated doctors and scientists because that was it. We would be living in a different world. Cause I know some countries, you know, they, oh, wow. It's just so much going on around the world. It's just, you know, I don't even want to get into it on this video. Oh, Lord. Uh, then another one I have, um, yeah, it got in a, okay. They got a crypto sporidium occur each, there's still 748,000 cases of the crypto sporidium occur each year. It gets in the soil, it gets in the food, it gets in the water. Or it gets in it, uh, in your feces, infected feces. Because if it get in your if it get in your food, definitely gonna be in your feces or in your, even probably in your urine. It gets in the soil, the food, the water. And this is uh, let me see where this was located at. This was in um, uh, I didn't write down where that was from. I think it was oh Milwaukee. That was in Milwaukee, but that could occur anywhere. That was in Milwaukee. Contaminated water in Milwaukee. And it can get in your soil, your food, your water, or it can get in your feces. It doesn't matter. You got an infected, uh, that's in your, you know, that's why I tell you get your physicals every year so they can check everything. Because they don't know what you're eating and drinking and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, so I, I see the importance of that, you know. Then we had the whooping cough. It was highly contagious in the United States. 2010 and I think that's 2000. I don't know. I don't know that 2004, but that's 2010. They had 10,000 cases and 10 infants died of whooping cough. And it said doctors recommend that pregnant women get the vaccine at uh, when they're in the third trimester. Coughing attacks can last for months. For months, whooping cough outbreak every every three to five years. So. We don't know when a whooping cough will come back. That's why you have to still get your shot. Make sure your kids get their shots for the polio. Yeah, polio outbreak or something else. I remember that polio outbreak. Polio outbreak. You got rubella, diphtheria. Uh, you got whoop. Uh, you got a. I think it was called a DTP shot. Diphtheria, Robitussin. I think it was a Robitussin. I think it's diphtheria, polio. I know. I know it's called DPT. So it's been a long time since I had, you know, I had my, my sons all, you know, older now, so they've been vaccinated. We have, you know, oh, we also have, uh, after the whooping cough, 
You know, make sure your kids, make sure you always make sure your kids get their shots, their polio, DPT shots. Um, then we had the measles, mumps, and rubella. Uh, measles is a virus causes causes fever, runny nose, cough, red eyes, and sore throat. A later rash that spreads over the whole body. Now, if you, if you if kids, make sure your kids get their measles shots because you don't want that. You know, that's something else too. And both spreading all over your whole body. Doctor, doctor, second vaccine for everyone. Fewer cases. Outbreak was 2014 and 2015. So in other words, they have. Oh, you're right, because you know when you get usually when you get a DPT, I believe they get. I don't know if it's four. I believe it's four of those, but you get a certain amount. You know, you have the chart. They give you the chart. So you get a certain amount of measles, mumps, and rubella, and you get your, uh, you know, polio shot. Yeah, you well back then in the day. They give you a polio, you know, and they just give you a little squirt in your mouth. So they did that to me, too, and my kids. They give you a little squirt in your mouth out of the little tube, out of this little tube they used to have. And I think that's the last, uh, oh, the last one we have, um, oh, we have AIDS, AIDS, HIV is the last one. AIDS has started, I guess, right here, they got 1980s, it started in 1980s to the present. 1.2 million people in the United States have HIV. Now they have, uh, I don't know when they started this pill, but they have a pill. They have this pill, it's called PEP. It prevents HIV from developing. Uh, new, new diagnosis has fallen since 2005. And then other thing they have, uh, HIV may be transmitted sexually or through blood, body fluids from person to person. Can be transmitted from mother to unborn baby if not treated. So in other words, if you know you're pregnant, and you think you might have that. Uh, I mean, not, not, don't think you have it, but if you're pregnant and you, you know, if you want to, I, mean, I don't know, you know, if you want to get this. Uh, I don't know if you want to take that pill. I don't know. I, I guess it would be to your doctor's advice. But it said it's transmitted through blood, body fluids from person to person. So in other words, practice safe sex. That's the best way to not to. You know, practice uh, safe sex. It says because it can be trans uh, transmitted from mother to baby, unborn babies. So in other words, I guess if you know you have it, and then you get pregnant, I guess they would probably treat you so it won't go. You know, so your baby won't have it. So they say on here, sterilize needles, protect protect yourself during sex. A new anti re uh I don't know if this word is anti retrieval. I guess it's retrieval medicine. It says a new anti-retrieval uh, medicine that prevents HIV from developing within 72 hours. So it says so medical, the medical profession is steadily improving, increasing, advancing. I would say advancing. That's a good word. But, um, oh, I, did I, I don't think I talked about this one here. The typhoid Mary. Typhoid Mary, 1906 to 1907. Uh, they got 10,071 people passed away from typhoid fever. Um, typhoid fever. What they call it right here, it said typhoid Mary, but they call it typhoid fever. So 10,000 people passed away from typhoid fever. So just a lot of stuff to read up on. So you know what, this diphtheria epidemic, uh, polio, uh, Contaminated water, and these are all things to think about. Contaminated water in Milwaukee, and that's when the disease got in the water. That's why I think uh, now they're talking about, I didn't see that on there, but you have to be careful for drinking uh, that faucet water because it has lead in there. That water has lead in it. You have to be careful for that. And Lead is just about, you know, I guess a lot of us, you know, just probably about everybody probably have some portion of lead in our bodies, but I guess it has to be, I guess they don't, you know, the medical profession don't want it to be at a certain level. Uh, so I guess, you know, because we never know when you're out, you know, in the air, pollution, and everybody probably have a certain amount of lead in their bodies, but they don't want it to get at a certain level because it can affect, it can affect you and your help you know but i want to say thanks for joining me today and so you get a chance read up on these things you know um 
go to the CDC's web page, uh, information page, and you know, world the World Health Health Organization's uh, web page, and this is some good, interesting information. I'm gonna start keeping up with them, and because this is actually my first time, uh, you know, viewing this viewing this information on their on their uh, information page and their website. So I am going to keep up, you know, because these outbreaks that we get, these viruses and all that, and I wanted to know where in the world did this coronavirus come from. Well, now, actually, my uh, what prompted me to do my research is my niece told my brother, because uh, she's a nurse, so she told my brother that the doctor told her that it came from, uh, uh, the coronavirus came from some bats. So I said, you know, let me do my research and see what's going on. So that's when I went on and did my research, and I did, and that's what it say. They say, where did the coronavirus come from? The coronavirus came from a bat, a snake, or a pangolin. So they seem to think that the bats hibernate in the winter, so it might not be likely that it came from the bat, but it could have initiated from the bat and went into the snake and, or the pangolin and right on into the human. And they're saying that, you know, from my research uh, on the CDC's website, uh, you... Once you uh once we encounter uh, uh, a virus, then our body nine times out of ten, I guess they're saying, your body will become immune to that uh to that virus, and also your body may become immune to certain shots too. That's why the flu, in other words, that's why you have to we have to get our flu shots every year because that same flu shot will not work probably that that next year because your body is immune to that same shot. That's why you have to get a shot every year. So they say they're changing every year. So they give us, they're changing up on the shots. So they're not giving you the same flu shot that they gave you the year before. But I mean, I guess they don't tell you that, but that's what that's what's happening. You get a flu shot this year, it's not going to be the same flu shot that you're going to get the next year. Because your body might have developed an immunity to that same flu shot. So the next year you get a flu shot, it would be a different one. It might be a different strain, a different, we don't know if they're changing the uh, medication inside the flu shot. So that's another question I would. That's another. Now I'm gonna do some research on that. That would be my next topic. I'm gonna find out what do you put in these shots. You know, I like to know all that. I want to know what goes in stuff. When stuff going in your body, you definitely want to know what is going inside. What is inside? So uh, I invite you. you know, I invite you. You know, it's free public information. Uh, go to the CDC's web page and. You know, do some research. Uh, world, the World Health Health Organization, and see what they're talking about. And it's very good, enlightening information. We don't have to be doctors, but this information is powerful. That's why I was talking about about. I be talking about all the time when I um uh, some of my videos. I'm talking about information systems. It's all, it's all the information system. So uh, that informa information, I'm using technology to pull in this information right here. So that's why I, when I do my videos, I got a few videos on information systems and information technology. All this is about business. So information systems, information technology. So I'm using my HP computer, which is an information technology device, to pull in this information that I just received from the CDC's website and the CDC's uh, information pe medical information page. Uh, so, you know, thanks for joining me today and just wanted to give you a little insight on the viruses, uh, you know, these different, you know, so bad, get your kids vaccinated so they won't encounter these, these uh, different uh, epidemics, you know, polio, uh, diphtheria, uh, um, polio, diphtheria, you know, whatever shots that you have to get that the doctor tell you have to get. So, but, you know, and then also if you're traveling, check with the CDC. They said check with, their, check with them on their webpage if you're going to travel because certain countries, you might need a vaccine because they still have outbreaks. They still have outbreaks time to time and certain illnesses, certain viruses, certain diseases. So those are the things we don't think about, but, you know, that's important. That's important. I tell you, so that's very important. So um, I want to say thanks for joining me today, and I hope you have a nice Saturday. So check out the website. Very viable, viable, very viable, valuable. Sometimes I can't even get my words out. Very valuable is enlightening and 
valuable, informative, uh, enlightening, uh, and uh, I guess is the main word is probably much needed. Much needed, you know, much needed information. So we have to know about our own bodies. They're giving us information. They're telling us to wash our hands and stay six feet apart and stay in the house. And But, you know, they can only do but so much because they can't really make you stay in the house, but they just tell you things for your own good. So, but they can get, they can give an order because that stuff is spreading. So, you know, I guess they're using whatever, uh, whatever, uh, I guess I don't know, they're using whatever ability they have that they can enforce. To get people to stay in the house. Or some people feel like, you know, some people probably feel, you know, I ain't worried about them. I ain't staying in the house because they can't tell me what to do. Some people feel like that, you know. But when I see the numbers of all the people that's catching it, people that's catching it and people dying from it, that make me, you know, that make me say, hey, you know what? You don't have to tell me but once. You stay in the house. So that's what I'm saying. You don't have to tell me but once. I know this is a uh, uh, national, global, international. It's an international and global uh, health crisis. So when you tell me to stay in the house, that's what I'm going to do. I might be grown, but, you know, this is a health crisis. This is very, this is something different. So just like what if they tell you that, hey, we got a, uh, we got a killer out there and He's running from state to state, and he's killing anybody he see in sight. You know, y'all need to stay in the house. So you going to go back outside again, too? You going to go outside, too? No, nah, you going to be trying to say, hey. And then what if they say, oh, he's been sighted, you know, in this place and that place and blah, blah, blah. And you're going to say, well, you know what? You're going to go out there, and then you'll be subjected to, you know. But just an example, you know. But So thanks for joining me today, and I hope to see you again on my next video. So just wanted to read a few little things off of the CDC's web page. And, um, you know, just wanted to give you a little insight because I wanted to get that information out. Because I know my niece was talking about what the doctor told her. And she works as a nurse. I don't know what hospital she works at, but they told her that. So I said, you know what, I want to take it a little further. And I want to see for myself, you know, and I want to be able to, you know, do my research, do my own research. Because that's all I did in when I was in college, it was research, so, you know, research, research and writing, reading and writing. That's the only way you're going to find out things and do your own research. Sometimes you can't wait for other people to tell you everything, but they are giving us all the information that we need, but it's also good. That's why they tell you to go to the website. Wash your hands. Stay six feet away from people, you know, uh, whether, they infect, whether they are infected or not. You don't know, you know, and, um, you know, but just stay six feet away from them if you can. But I know, you know, families have to be together. You know, we try to be together. But, uh, but you know, we just have to stay safe. You know, use your judgment and just listen to the, uh, listen to the scientists, listen to the doctors, listen to Trump. They they're telling us stuff for our own good. <clears throat> so, go to the website. Go to the website. Check it out. <clears throat> go to the website and check it out. <clears throat> mhm. Mm so you all have a good one. And thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you on my next video. You all have a good one.